Hello guys, welcome to Hyperphysics. In this video, I'm going to discuss three important techniques that a student should know to solve a physics problem. The first method that I'm going to discuss is a very powerful technique known as the dimension analysis. The question, uh, I've given a question here. Uh, we can solve it together. The Schwarzschild radius RS of a black hole depends on its mass m, the speed of light c and the gravitation constant g. Uh, which is given the units is given here a meter cube per kilogram second squared which of the following quantities is rs so we know that rs rs is a radius right so we know that it's a Schwarzschild radius whatever be the radius we don't know what the concept is let's we just solve the question here first so we know that you has a unit of meter right meter or m okay so uh, the units are all given here the speed of light light the speed of light is c so it has a uh, unit of meter per second and the gravitation constant has a unit meter cube per kilogram second square so what we can find is we know that by dimensionality if rs is in the units of r or meter or a meter to be more precise then the quantity the answer has to be the whole thing has to be in meters right so what we do is we check the options first so we'll start with the first option 2g uh, m by mc 2g by mc squared okay so we neglect the two because uh, it's uh, this doesn't matter in, when we do dimension analysis so we have we know the units is m cube by kilogram second squared and the uh, unit of mass is kilogram so kg and uh, we know the c the speed of light has a unit meter per second so here it's c squared so meter square second square so you know that this cancels out and it turns out to be not equal to meters right so this is not the option when we are looking for this is not the Schwarzschild radius so let's look at the next option, option B. It says uh, the Schwarzschild radius to be 2gm by c squared. Okay, so we know the unit units here, we apply it here, that is uh, m cube divided by kilogram second squared times the mass m divided by c squared, that is meter square per second square right so this is the mass right so this is the mass so this is kilogram right this is not m so this cancels out and we are left with meter cube by meter square that is meter so this option i mean this option b 2 gm by c square has the equal units of rs so we can easily conclude that as other options are not similar I mean if there is 2 gm by c square and 4 gm by c square you can't use this option but here the options the form of options are different so we can easily say that this option rs will be the value of rs will be 2 gm by c square using the dimension analysis method okay the next method is very important method actually this is a derivative of the first method itself, but it's very powerful method. So the second method is we are going to create a formula. Okay, so we'll start with the question here. So the question goes like this. In outer space where the effect of gravity can be neglected, a drop of liquid assumes a spherical shape. However, when disturbed, it undergoes shape oscillation. We can see in the figure. The frequency nu of the oscillation of a drop depends on its equilibrium radius the density and the surface tension so we have to find what we have to find is the ratio of frequency of the mercury to water of which frequency uh, of the same equilibrium radius so the data are all given here the density as, a, as well as the surface tension uh, for the same equilibrium radius of both the liquids so what we do is we know what we have to find right the frequency frequency we are denoted as nu so the units of nu is second inverse or in mk system it's t to the power minus one okay 
so it says that the frequency depends on the radius so the radius r let me denote it as r is uh, has a unit meter so it has uh, in mk system it's we can represent it as l and density density is already given here right gram centimeter in centimeter cube right say per centimeter cube right so its density is given as gram per centimeter cube centimeter cube that we can write in terms of uh, in, in 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 si unit is kilogram per meter cube right so this has a dimension a uh, kilogram that has a mass and m cube that is a length length cube so the density has a, a dimension uh, we denote it like this as m l to the power minus 3 okay so we got all the dimensions here but there is one more thing that is left that's the surface tension which is given as newton per meter right so i'm going to denote surface tension as t so t is uh, t has a unit newton per meter uh, we know newton is the unit of force right so force is mass times acceleration mass is uh, we denote it as uh, m or kilogram mass times acceleration acceleration is l t to the power minus 2 divided by m is meter right so this one this m is meter right so it's it's a unit of length so we cancel it out and we get the dimension of the surface tension as m t to the power minus 2 so we'll solve this question by the fact that uh, the idea is that the left hand dimension the left hand side dimension has to be equal to the right hand side dimension so what we need to find is the frequency right so the frequency has a dimension of t to the power minus 1 right so in order to uh, you know occupy all the uh, all the possible values i mean ml uh, together with this uh, this frequency i'm going to write like this m0 l0 right this doesn't make any difference it's just just still frequency with m0 uh, equal to 1 l, l ratio 0 is 1 so this is the frequency right on the left hand side so it depends on radius right so the radius has a dimension that we have seen that is l l let's say we have we don't know the relation exactly the power the power exponent relation so we just say we arbitrary we choose something like alpha okay then we have a relation of uh, first we have taken radius then we are going to take the density density is m l to the power minus 3 time uh, the whole to the power beta okay then we have a surface tension term that is m t to the power minus 2 whole to the power gamma so this is just we are just going to uh, uh, rearrange these terms together so we will get l uh, just start with l okay l to the power alpha when here we have a minus 3 beta so l alpha minus 3 beta then we are going to take m m has a m to the power beta here and m to the power gamma here so we multiply it together m beta plus gamma and we have a t which is t to the power there is no t here but here it is t t is there to the power minus 2 this is minus 2 gamma right so this is the equation that we have to solve t to the power minus 1 okay right so we just equate the coefficients here uh, let me do it uh, right here okay yeah okay so what we have here is minus 2 gamma will be equal to minus 1 which implies gamma you get the value as 1 or 2 okay so the next equation will be beta plus gamma that will be equal to 0 which implies uh, beta will be equal to minus gamma that is equal to minus 1 over 2 and uh, then the other equation is alpha minus 3 beta equal to 0 right alpha minus 3 beta is equal to 0 okay then which implies alpha equal to 3 beta we know the value of beta here right so which implies alpha equal to minus 3 by 2 so we got all the exponent values here alpha beta and gamma which is substitute back it here from this equation so we i'm going to write, re, re, rewrite this this whole equation this whole equation this this thing this thing together in the equation form this we know that this is frequency right the left hand side is frequency 
and we substitute what this this was the radius right so radius to the power alpha alpha is what minus 3 by 2 so r to the power minus 3 by 2 okay then what is what uh, what was this this was the density right so density to the power beta so it's uh, rho to the power minus 1 over 2 and mt to the power minus 2 that is the uh, surface tension so that is t uh, denoted as t t to the power gamma is 1 by 2 so we just uh, rewrite this equation we will get 1 by r to the power 3 by 2 and square root of t to the power 1 by t by rho that's all that's the equation for to solve this problem so we know that this uh, this equation i mean this uh, problem itself says it has the same equilibrium radius so the frequency will be just frequency of sg by frequency of h2o will be equal to square root of t of sg divided by t of water times rho of water divided by rho of hg so you will get the answer from this thing this this thing only because all the all the quantities the rho and density uh, the surface tension of mercury as well as the water is given here in the table itself so it's just a direct simplification please let me know the answer um, i'll check i'll say if it is correct or wrong if you try this method itself you try it yourself and please let me know in the comments uh, about this answer you will get around 0.7 if not please let me know so we'll go to the next method which is uh, actually a very important method uh, in solving uh, it has a lot of application in solving problems that we'll see in the next method so the next method is a very important method known as the limiting method so i'll explain this method uh, while doing this question so we have this question here a particle of mass m moves in a center potential uh, the potential that is dependent on only on r that is minus k by r in a elliptic in an elliptical orbit and with an equation like this and uh, which a denotes the semi major axis and e uh, denotes the eccentricity of the system and uh, it is given that the energy total energy of the system is minus k by 2a then the maximum kinetic energy is we have to find the maximum kinetic energy so we know that ellipse is there right so ellipse is uh, having like this the shape of ellipse is like this and uh, you have a focus you have a, se a semi major axis and a semi minor axis so what happens if a equal to b so we know if a equal to b then this ellipse will turn out to be a circle right so also we know that the eccentricity of a circle is zero and eccentricity of a parabola is one this is for parabola and for ellipse is uh, less than one just for an information that's all so for in this case we are only dealing with e equal to zero so what happens when e equal to zero that's the, that is a question that we have to deal so if you take e equal to zero then uh, we'll just check the equations uh, then what is going to happen let's see if e equal to zero the option for one becomes e right plus e and uh, for e equal to zero this one becomes minus e and uh, what happens when this one becomes zero it will be also plus e and this one also this is a minus sign here so this will be also plus e so we know that for a circle the kinetic energy is uh, minus of total energy so here the total energy is given as e so the kinetic energy has to be equal to minus e right so the total energy will be minus e and uh, this uh, to not the total energy this maximum kinetic energy will be minus e so option b will be the right answer uh, by using this method so it's a very easy method if you are going to do in a straightforward way this is this this method is going to take a lot of time so if just if you just approximate the elliptical orbit to a circular orbit this question becomes very easy so we'll do one more question regarding the limiting method so the question goes like this an annulus of mass m made of material of uniform density has inner and outer radius a and b respectively 
its principal moment of inertia along the axis of symmetry perpendicular to the plane of the annular cesis. You have to find that thing. So you know what is an annular cesis, right? So we have this thing and a concentric ring, and uh, we have to find the moment of inertia perpendicular to the plane of annulus. So this is the I. Okay, so we have the radius A and this is B. So A is, so this is like this for an annulus. So let's see what happens when A equal to B. For A equal to B, this whole thing annulus changes to a ring. It is very clear that we will be changing to a ring. Let's say if A equal to B equal to A. Let's say for this case. So in that case, we know that for a ring of radius A, we know that the, the moment of inertia that is perpendicular to the plane of the ring is I that is equal to Ma square. We just Now we can do this thing, same thing here by just checking A equal to B. So if you do the calculation for A equal to B, this will be infinity, which is not possible. This will be zero and this will be also zero and this will be half m. Let a equal to b equal to a, so there will be 2a square. So that will be ma square. So the answer is t. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to take any differential cross section or anything to calculate the moment of inertia. You just use a limiting method because annulus is, uh, you can limit it to a ring or a disk. If a equal to zero, you can also limit that to a disk. That is also possible. So that is also possible. You can see this one in a different method also, right? For a equal to zero, this will be m b square by two. That will be the that will be the moment of inertia of a disk with a radius b perpendicular to the plane of the disk, right? So anyway, this can be possible. A equal to b or a equal to zero. You can put like that. That will give you the correct answer. And uh, using this limiting method. We can do a lot of other problems which I can't use. I can't show all the problems in this small video. But surely I'll try uploading more and more videos regarding the uh, limiting method, which is a very important method in physics on solving problems.